over the dentures and hand them back to her. And so, naturally, I did not do that. And I said, well, what are you going to do with these dentures? She said, well, what do you think? They, they go back to lost and found. She said, oh, they'll come looking for them. And, mm. uh, and that, I thought she was going to shock you and tell you the pilot lost them. Listen, I'm telling you, it, uh, it, was, it was something to recover. I thought they were going to give you a free bag of peanuts for finding the pilot's dentures. <laughs> you can see the kind of mood I'm in. I mean, that, that Italian espresso is working its wonders through my brain. Yeah, that and an allergy pill, and I'm feeling better than I have in a week. <laughs> Stay in the line. Free copy of Countdown to Mecca goes out to you. Why shouldn't I have a good time? Why shouldn't I have a good time on radio? I'm not allowed to. I love when people say having a better time than I'm allowed to have. That's a line of mine from 1995, by the way. But the thing is, the people know when you're having a good time. That's the thing. They can hear it you know, in your joy and your voice. Once you have to tell them what a good time you're having, like I just did, they're not sure you are having a good time, but I really am, by the way. It's the coffee, incidentally. WABC, Max, welcome to the Savage Nation. What's on your mind? I just wanted to share um, part of an interview I heard with B.B. King. It shows you the difference in mentality and the gratitude. So he was being interviewed about his life early on, and he played in front of a white audience that he wasn't expecting. And they were all sitting on the floor, and he came out, he was introduced, and he says, anyway, they introduced him as uh, the chairman of the board, and he said, and they all got up, meaning they were sitting on the floor, they all got up and clapped, and he said, they had never seen me, they, but they, they had heard my music, and he said, what could I do? He says, so I played for 75 minutes, and he says, and I must tell you, he says, they got up four or five times during the session. Now, what was important about that, in the level of... The Do you know that George Bush, George H.W. Uh, Bush, uh, awarded him the National Medal of Arts? In 06, he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom from George W. Bush. So, it, it, you know, it doesn't take a Democrat to respect uh, an artist, uh, even if they're African-American, as you would think today. Okay. The beautiful what? thing about B.B. King is not only how talented he was, listen to this. He was born on a cotton plantation in, uh, in, in a small town in Mississippi, the son of sharecroppers. Did you hear this? Raised by his maternal grandmother because his mother left his father for another man. Okay, Very typical. You know, did you hear that a lot of kids today, they have no family. But it didn't stop him. Why? Listen to the key point. He sang in the gospel choir at Elkhorn Baptist Church in Kill Michael. And that's what saved B.B. King, the church. At the age of 12, he purchased his first guitar for 15 bucks. The government didn't give him a guitar and didn't give him lessons, and he didn't have a president screaming about racism. He just loved music, period. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O-I-N. Well, here's another story. The war on police goes on. Officer deaths surge amid hostile rhetoric and anti-cop climate started by Barack Obama. Eric Holder, Al Sharpton has been uh, dummied up, by the way. They dummied up that rat. Suddenly that little rat is no longer to be seen anywhere. Now the cops are dying as a result of his big f mouth, his filthy little mouth. They dummied him up and buried him somewhere. But cops are dying because of that rat. Okay, that's a story. I should stop here. Another one. Military press to design line of women-friendly combat boots. You hear this? We don't have enough money for bullets. They're going to design special boots now for the women. Well, that's the way it goes. I'm actually all for women in combat. If they want to die for the country, God bless them. When I look at the Russian military in World War II, they had millions of women. Some of them were snipers. They did great jobs. The Chinese have women in combat. God bless you if you want to die for America. Go to Tikrit for me. Do me a favor. I don't, I'll give you a pair of boots. I'll buy them for you. Go. Do me a favor. Go to Tikrit. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. A great American voice is gone. B.B. King, another, another world. Grew up uh, on a plantation, a sharecropper's son. And uh, because, you know, he had the church, he had life. He had a soul, and the soul found its expression through the guitar and music. And the rest is history. He didn't need the government. He didn't need Barack Obama bashing white people to become a guitarist. You see what I'm saying to you? Do you get it? That the negativity of the government was not necessary for this great musician to thrive? But all right, let's leave that alone. I don't even want to talk about it. The George Stephanopoulos, who I'm calling George Staphylococcus story, I say he's too glib to fail. They're not going to get rid of him. Next case. They're not getting rid of him. That's that simple. Did they get rid of O'Reilly with the last scandal? No. There's certain media figures that are going to be around no matter what happens. I'm a media figure. I'm still around. People have tried to shaft me and destroy me. They still do. The book is out, Countdown to Mecca. And the customer reviews on Amazon are really strong. They're nice. And the trolls are running already. The trolls are running with reviews. They don't even read the book. They put me down, calling me names. They don't even read the book. This is what happens. The left-wing trolls, they're jealous of my success. They're jealous of the genius that emanates from my mouth every day. They can't shine my shoes, by the way, most of them. But the people like me, that's all. Here's one. This was an excellent read. I highly recommend this book. You almost don't need caffeine because your adrenaline level will be up there. Walter Winslow writes, Dr. Savage is a great writer, and this book is a page burner. Uh, another one says, this is a new category for me, and I'm liking it, though. This is my first foray into conservative talk show host novels since it's new. I'm not even near finished. I'm used to self-help novels, so this is heavy for my mind, but it's clear to me it's worth it. It's stimulating my imagination. I appreciate the efforts that Mr. Savage makes on air and in the literary world. Here's another one. Very unpredictable and fast reading. Here's another one by Jen. A must read. Great book. Love all of Savage's books. Another one. Brilliance. Brilliant. Couldn't put it down. On and on. It's all there. Forget the trolls. They're everywhere. You know, anytime anyone who loves America puts anything out, the vermin put out attacks. And we're talking about my latest novel, Countdown to Mecca, which is the third in a trilogy in the last of its series. That's it. Now let's move on. KVOR, Sean, welcome to the Savage Nation. I thank you so much for taking my call. I just wanted to say I'm reading your book, Borrowed from a Friend. And it's so I'm not much of a book reader, but I can't put it down. You've got an imagination that just it's incredible. And then that's the first comment. And the second one is you, are, sir, are accredited to America. I haven't been here very long, but I hear, I hear what you're saying, and my God. Wait, 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 hold on now. I love your accent. I'm going to guess it wrong. Uh, it has to be Ireland or Scotland, right? Oh, I, of course. I, all the way from Ireland, yes. Now, I, I was immediately going to say Ireland, and I learned in school, always go with your first instinct. Well, the Irish have a history of tradition, uh, a literary tradition, so obviously you like uh, the written word. I love it. I love the Bible. That's yes. I don't, I don't blame you. It's the original fiction to some people, but the word of God to others. Well, let me send you a free copy of Countdown to Mecca, my Irish friend, so you have your own copy. I wish I could sign him, but I can't. Uh, let's see. Let me read you a paragraph from it. Oh, here's another one. Everyone likes my character, Saul Minsky, the Jewish gangster. And him and, and Jack are in a car together, and they're having a little fun word games with each other. So Saul says something like, well, Jack uses a big word, obsequious and disingenuous. So Saul says, who's got the big, big vocabulary now? Jack snorted in return. Words are like cojones, he growled. I got him when I need him. Hell, I'll bet those functionaries have got a better health plan than you do. Saul the gangster says, my health plan's got six chambers, Saul chuckled. Hey, if I worried about my health, would I be in the business I'm in? <laughs> Come on. Even Robert likes that line. The big Mercedes was speeding and weaving towards Montgomery Street when a black SUV sped by as if Saul's car didn't exist. It only slowed when it got to the filbert steps in the shadow of Coy Tower. The, SUV pitch, the SUV's pitch black exterior and blacked out windows set off alarms in Jack's head. One look at Saul and the reporter could see the mobster's buzzers had been tripped as well. 
Uh, blah, 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 blah. Where's the gun part? I want to read about the guns. So they jump out. Oh, he was looking. I can't find his guns. Oh, where's the thing about the guns? I can't find it. Oh, here it is. As Jack jumped out, he fervently wished he had access to the gun collection back at the boat where he lived. What he wouldn't have done for his Colt Combat Commander 45 or 6 hour 380 right now. As if reading his mind, Saul reached across the seat and tapped the glove compartment release. Inside were two narrow, polished pine wood boxes. Saul opened one and removed the six hour mosquito automatic with a custom suppressor. He nodded toward the other box. Jack grabbed it. Inside was a suppressed Ruger Mark II. Its silencer already installed in the barrel. Right tool for the right job, Saul grunted. It's good. I like guns. I like boats. I like alcohol. I like certain things, and I write about them. I like America. I write about America. I hate Islamists, so I turn them into the vermin that they are. In fact, a psychiatrist friend of mine just finished my first novel called Abuse of Power, and it ends when the Islamic terrorist is finally trapped on the top of the Golden Gate Bridge, and Jack gets to him just before something terrible was going to happen, and he knocks him off the towers of the Golden Gate Bridge into San Francisco Bay, and as the Muslim terrorist is careening toward the black waters below, the last line of the novel is, enjoy the virgins, A.H., my psychiatrist friend really liked that. He said it gave him a kick. I said it would make for a nice movie. If we had patriots in the film business that we once had, that would have been a film two years ago. But since it doesn't cover LGBT safe uh, issues, uh, they won't touch it in Hollywood. It's that simple. You know how sick Hollywood's getting? That great TV series where it's about a soldier who comes back and he runs for Congress and he's a secret Muslim. What's the name of that series, Robert? Uh, I, I keep forgetting it. What's the name? Even Obama watches it. I wonder why. Homeland. homeland, Homeland, Homeland. They've gotten so much heat from the Muslims within that they're turning the new villains into white uh, Aryan nation types. Muslims are no longer about to be villain, allowed to be villains. Even though the acts of terrorism continue setting people uh, on fire while they're alive, raping children, enslaving women. No. No, no, it has to be the white male. It has to be the new, the new enemy to Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, and Ratzenberg. That's all. I didn't want to get political, that's all, but I did. Here I am. 855-400-7282. Uh, oh, here's a, a, an airline dirt horror story from a pilot. Bill, KSFO, thanks for calling. You're a pilot. What kind of plane? Uh, Airbus 330. Big plane, beautiful plane. So what's the worst filth story <laughs> that you've ever seen? Well, I have a few, but... Uh... One time I was I was flying from uh, all San Francisco to Tokyo, and uh, I would make an attempt every hour or so to, when I'd get up to go use the head, I'd take a lap around up one aisle and down the other. i kind of like to see who's on the airplane and also, uh, you know, prevent my... Yeah, to prevent the flab... Yeah, you want to prevent phlebitis, I get it. <laughs> yeah, anyway... Uh, airplane is reasonably full. There's uh, lots of Asians on it. Uh, <clears throat> the meal service is going on. People are sitting there eating. And I come up the, the right side aisle heading back towards the flight deck. And uh, here's a guy, uh, an older Asian gentleman. He's made himself quite comfortable. He's uh, sitting there in his shorts and his, his wife beater T-shirt. His suit is draped over the seat in front of him. He has a pair of nail clippers, and he's sitting there clipping his toenail. <laughs> he was in his underwear clipping his toenails on the plane? Yes, sir. And, and wait, is that illegal? I mean, I, did, were you able to say anything to him? That could be a cultural thing. You never know. you got to be careful today. Well, this has been years ago. but uh, Yeah, but today, if you came upon an Asian, let's say, in his underwear, clipping his toenails as a pilot, you'd probably be intimidated. You probably couldn't even say anything for fear you'd be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the world the world is upside down. You'd have to check a manual somewhere, like page 3025, to find out if there's a country in Asia where clipping your toenails in your underwear on a commercial flight is considered a cultural uh, expression of some kind. Well, I think he was uh, just making him comfortable. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, boy. Let me send you something to read uh, the next time you're laid over in Tokyo. Countdown to Mecca by Michael <laughs> Savage. <laughs> no one can do anything anymore. Look what the left and the lawyers have done to us. All right, a few more calls. We're having a little fun. 
Al on WABC, give us 